Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good? I am so honored to be here. Thank you guys so much for having me. I um, was listening to Miss Duncan earlier, and she was talking about Miss um, um, Morrison's poem and talking about sharing your light with others. But I think it's just as important and just as imperative to entrepreneurs and to our communities to share darkness as well. Uh, my guidance counselor, according to her, I was not supposed to be here with you guys today. I'm trying not to cry because it's, I wasn't supposed to be here today. According to my guidance counselor, I was never supposed to become an author of two books. According to this guidance counselor, I was never supposed to work for some of the top companies in the world. According to this guidance counselor, I was never supposed to start a company that makes people smile every single day. I was never supposed to be here with you today. My mother hates when I tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. Um, if you could major or minor in anything in high school, I majored in the two Bs. Anyone want to take one guess at what one of those two Bs meant? Shout it out. Boys was one, yes, right? And the other one was basketball. So if you could major or minor in anything in high school, I majored and minored in boys and basketball. Uh, it's embarrassing, but hey, I was 14 years old and I had my priorities, right? Uh, <laughs> And as much as I, you know, wanted to be a really good student, and having a J Jamaican mother who valued education very highly and would tell us over and over again, hey, you know how many miles I walk to go to school? <laughs> and you're taking this for granted, right? Or you know how many times I had to walk with buckets of water on my head? You guys know that story, right? <laughs> but I didn't want to hear any of that. I had my priorities. I didn't really take school seriously. But I wanted to go to college. According to my mom, I had to go to college. So I had to figure something out. So I fast forward to my senior year of high school. I go to meet with this guidance counselor. And I'm sharing with her my hopes and my dreams. I want to go to the University of Central Florida. I want to major in TV production. Please guide me on my yellow brick road to success. All right? So she looks at me. She looks back at the computer screen. She looks back at me. And she looks back at the computer screen. And she says, Felicia, you will never make it to a college or a university. You should just look at getting a trade or going at, graduating high school and getting a job. But you will never make it to college. Raise your hand if anyone has ever told you that you couldn't achieve something that deep down in your heart you knew that you could. Raise your hand. And keep your hands up if you use their words as motivation to prove them wrong. All right? Keep your hands up if you dedicated your book to that person. All right? <laughs> so I, you know, it, it took that person, right? That person that told me, that woman that said that you weren't going to amount to anything, that you should just settle for what your current environment is. That was a kick in the butt that I needed, right? So I said, you know what? I'm going to prove her wrong. So I started looking at scholarship applications, started applying to college, started seeing that, hey, a lot of them didn't ask me for a GPA, or some of them the GPA requirements were really low, right? Or sometimes you just have to write an essay about bees, and you can win $500, right? Pretty cool. And it took going into the office and a career counselor who shared her first failure story with me, because I walked around this table and I was starting to get discouraged. I didn't see anything that applied to me at the moment. And she said, Felicia, I had been in your shoes before. All you need to do is walk around this table, look at these applications one more time with a different set of eyes. Because there are things on that table will take you from here to where you want to be. It was Marissa Fontaine sharing her failure story with me. Fast forward to Senior Awards Night. They're calling up all the National Honor Society students. I'm getting a little discouraged. I'm like, I'm going to have to go to the military office tomorrow if they don't call my name. And they call my name. 
and it's three familiar women that get up on that stage. Three. And as I walk to the stage, they're holding that big check. You know, the checks that look really cool, but you can't actually take them to the bank? Those checks, right? And it has my name on it. It has a one, and then it has a few zeros. I end up winning $120,000 in scholarships and grants to go to Lynn University. Right here, right? So raise your hand if you woke up this morning saying, I wish I had more money. Oh, come on, let's be honest. My hand's up, right? Raise your hand. All right, raise your hand if you woke up this morning saying, I wish I had a new car. All right, yeah. But if you have no money in your bank account, or you don't know how to get from A to B, how do I get that car if I have absolutely no money? It's a little bit discouraging. It almost seems unrealistic, correct? All right? But this is real. All right? Let me, yeah, it's real. So who woke up this morning saying, I wish I had more money? Yeah? Anyone want $5? Anyone? Does anyone want $5? Anybody at all? Does anyone want five dollars? Woo! <laughs> Guys, really quick. So we all understood what the word opportunity meant, right? Sometimes it's given to us, sometimes we have to what? Take it. So the same opportunity was presented to each and every one of you in this room. And I think I may have asked about six or seven times before Diana finally decided to get up and get the money. Why? She wanted it. But what happened to the rest of you, especially my front row people? What's going on? What happened? I'm really disappointed. It's two words, and I want you guys to repeat these two words after me. Called head junk. You can do a little bit better than that. Head junk. Head junk. So those are all those thoughts inside your head saying, she's just kidding. I don't want anyone to laugh at me right? Or because it doesn't look like what I think it's supposed to look like when I get money. I'm not working all week and getting a paycheck from someone else, right? Or I'm an entrepreneur slaving 60, 70, 80 hours a week waiting for my customer to finally answer the phone because their bill is late, right? Because it doesn't look like what we think it's supposed to look like, we're going to sit in our seat and make this opportunity miss us, right? And success and failure are the exact same thing. Success doesn't look like what we think it's supposed to look like. Failure doesn't look like what it, we think it's supposed to look like. We don't share the stories about success and failure. So when it happens to us, we are devastated. Devastated beyond belief. I started Feverish Ice Cream with my husband. I'm the chief popsicle of Feverish Ice Cream, right? We, try and have fun. And we started it with less than $3,000. Pretty much wiped out my savings after losing my job. I was devastated from losing my job. I didn't know what I was going to do because I loved marketing for Nintendo. I loved it. But I had this, this, this thought in my head after falling down, chasing after an ice cream truck, all right? And sometimes a good paying job, guys, will stand in the way of your dreams just like a bad paying job. Do you guys agree? So I had this idea. I'm like, hey, I'm going to start this ice cream company. Gourmet popsicles, right? We're going to have fun. We're going to make people smile using all organic and natural ingredients in our pops. Organic evaporated cane juice. It's about time the popsicle grew up, right? That's how we felt. We even put alcohol in our popsicles. Guinness pop, why not, right? And we try and have a lot of fun. But I hit a roadblock. Because I'm, I'm a person that believes you start small, but you constantly think big. Constantly. But that starting small, sometimes it gets you, right? So we're starting to rev up our company. We're starting to try to expand to more cities. We're buying product. And then I run out of money. What does that mean? You're not supposed to run out of money, right? Entrepreneurs do not run out of money. Some people are laughing like, what? What are you talking about? I'm out of money right now, right? 
and I ran out of money, and I had never been so depressed in my life. Because you read all these entrepreneurial books. We all do it, right? We all pick up the books when we want to start a business. And you're reading through these books, and they're telling you the story. So we're looking for these success stories to con continually motivate us, right? But then we're also reading these books, and we're like, where is the GPS? Right? I just want to plug in where I am right now, and then you're supposed to tell me where I'm supposed to be in order to make my millions, right? And I had a mentor who said, Felicia, put down the damn books. All right? He's a preacher now, so he doesn't curse anymore. But he said, you're never going to find what you're looking for in those books. All right? You need to, instead of dreaming, you need to activate your dream. So I find myself out of money. And I'm depressed. I don't leave home for two weeks. I'm on the verge of closing down feverish ice cream. Matched with that, a company offered me $75,000 to go around the country handing out free cheese. Right? So I go to my dad. I said, my dad, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break from feverish because I don't want to know what to do. I'm depressed. I can't afford to leave the house. This is very dark. I've never seen my bank account look so ugly. And I go to my dad, and I'm telling him this. I'm saying, I'm just going to take a break. And he said, Felicia, if you take a break from this business, you're never coming back. And he said, yes, I understand that you are in debt, and you're in debt like you've never been before. But at one point in time, I ran my company into $300,000 in debt. And when you get on my level, then you can talk about quitting. All right? But until then, you get out with that ice cream cart, you push it around the neighborhood if you have to, and you get up and you get out of your head and that head junk, and you go sell some popsicles. All right? I was like, dang, Dad. And so that's what we did, right? Because what he did, by, what, by him sharing his failure story with me, it made me see that what's going on in here was not that big of a deal, right? By him sharing, my father sharing his failure story with me, it made me understand that this is a part of the process, right? Bumps in the roads are part of the entrepreneurial process. They are part of life's process. And you have to trust the process. And I can imagine, and I think about, if I would have stopped that day when I went to my dad and he would have been like, you know what, go ahead and quit. What would I have done? I would have quit, right? None of this would have happened. Tom Cruise as a client, Google as a client, Adidas as a client, Maker's Mark, Bourbon Popsicles as a client. How does a popsicle company get clients like that? By being very scrappy with limited resources. We talk about technology and the fact that our communities, we are now closing the gap of the digital divide as consumers, right? But we are not creators of technology. I can attest to you right now, social media, Facebook and Twitter, if those two things did not exist, feverish ice cream would not have, uh, would not have existed. So it is important that we are tweeting and hashtagging, accomplish what you will, right? But understanding that, guys, we have everything that we need in order to be successful, right? We look at Oprah as the pinnacle of success, right? 30 years ago when Oprah had the fro, y'all remember that? Right, 30 years ago, and you guys may have heard this before, but when Oprah had the fro 30 years ago, Facebook did not exist yet, right? Twitter, Twitter was just a sound. An apple was something that we ate, right? For, um, 3G was a parking space. LinkedIn was a prison, right? And the cloud, the cloud was in the sky 30 years ago. So in order to get from here to here to here, guys, to having universal music, wanting us to wrap our carts with David Guetta's face on it. Weddings, you name it. Being honored at the White House, guys. Having fun and making people smile every single day of their life. It took people telling me their failure story in order for me to keep going.
So I challenge each and every one of you guys at TEDx Jamaica. Woo! I challenge each and every one of you to reach out to someone else and share your failure story with them so that we can completely change the landscape of entrepreneurship in our communities and in our world. Thank you, guys. Thank you.